Weight and balance is pretty important if you haven't figured it out yet, and the airplane has to be loaded properly in order to get the performance you expect and to keep you safe while you're flying. There are a few basic formulas that you need to know. Weight times arm equals moment. Also moment divided by weight equals the center of gravity. The datum is a reference line that the manufacturer selects, and from here we measure all of our lengths. In the Cessna, it's the engine firewall, that's your reference line or your datum. Now your arm is the distance away from the datum that something is. If you're sitting 36 inches behind the firewall, your arm is 36 inches. Moment is a downwards force in the airplane. You take the length of the arm or the distance from the datum, you multiply it by the weight, and you have your moment. And usually the units are inch pounds. Everything in the airplane has a moment. So to find out your weight and balance, you take all these moments, you divide them by your weight, and that gives you the center of gravity for the entire airplane. Here are a couple more terms before we actually do a calculation. The basic empty weight is the airplane and all the installed equipment, plus the oil and unusable or undrainable fluids. Gross weight is the total weight of the airplane passengers, baggage, fuel, and oil. That's your maximum airplane weight. These next two you might hear, Payload is what you could make money off of if you're an airline, and that would be passengers, bags, and cargo. Finally, the useful load is how much stuff can you carry. If you took the gross weight and you subtracted the basic empty weight, in other words, maximum weight minus the empty airplane, how much useful load do you have? Here's a weight and balance question that you might see on the written test. How should the 500 pound weight be shifted to balance the plank on the fulcrum? As you can see, you have the big plank, the big rectangle, that's 200 pounds. And you can see that it's slightly offset of the fulcrum, so it's offset to the right-hand side, 15 inches. Also on the right side, you have that 250-pound weight with a 20-inch arm. And on the left-hand side, you have a 500-pound weight out at 15 inches. So the question is, how do you balance it? To solve this, you need to figure out how much force is on each side of the fulcrum. The right side is a little bit more complicated, so let's start with that. You'll take 15 inches times the plank weight of 200, and that'll give you 3,000 for the moment of the plank that's hanging over on the right-hand side of the fulcrum. Now we can take the 20 inches times our 250-pound weight. That'll give you a moment of 5,000 for a total combined moment of 8,000 on the right-hand side of the fulcrum. Now on the left-hand side, 15 times 500, that gives you 7,500. Intuitively, you can tell that the 500-pound weight has to be moved over to the left-hand side. That will give you a bigger arm, and a bigger arm times a weight will give you a bigger moment. Let's move the 500 pound weight to the left one inch, that's 16 inches. Now 16 times 500 just happens to be 8,000. Another way to solve this is to set this up as an equation. Since we know the 500 pound weight has to be moved, we can set this up as 500x equals 15 times 200 plus 20 times 250. You get 500x equals 8,000, and then x becomes 16. So your arm is 16 on the left-hand side. All right, let's look at an actual airplane problem. Most POHs will have a sample loading problem and maybe some space where you can write your own problem in. So here's how you compute a weight and balance. Number one is the basic empty weight, and this is the actual weight of that specific tail number and the moment for that specific tail number can't just use the numbers of the empty weight that the airplane comes off of the production line with. Since we don't have that, we'll just copy what they had in this sample problem. So we'll say the weight is 1136 with a moment of 34. Fuel, if you didn't know, is 6 pounds per gallon. And we'll also copy their numbers, but I'll show you how to find that. Our capacity is 24.5 gallons, and if we go to the next page, there's a chart for finding your weight and for finding your moment. On the left hand side going up on the vertical axis you have the load weight in pounds and on the bottom you have your load moment divided by a thousand. We divide our moment by a thousand to make it easy to calculate. For fuel if you look it's a dashed line so we can go ahead and follow that up to 24.5 gallons and in this case they mark every 10 gallons for you. If they didn't you would need to take your weight of your fuel and then follow that line until you find your moment. So if we follow the dash line to 24.5 gallons, you can see that it's about 147 pounds like they said, and it's 6.2 on the moment. So we can go back to our page and put in 147 and 6.2. Now for the pilot and passenger, we'll go ahead and we'll put in 300 pounds so we can calculate it. If we go back to our chart, the pilot and passenger is a solid line. So if we take 300 pounds and we can follow that across to our solid line, 
And if we go straight down, you can see that that's right at about 11.7 or so. We won't have any baggage, so that's going to be zero for both baggage areas. So if you add everything up, you get 1583 for the weight and 51.9 for the moment. In the Cessna 152 POH, there's a center of gravity moment envelope. So if we go and take our weight of 1583 and we take our moment of 51.9, you can see that we are within the moment envelope. There's also a center of gravity limit chart. And if you remember to find your center of gravity, you take your moment and you divide it by your weight. Keep in mind that your moment is divided by 1000 for easy calculations, so you have to multiply the result by 1000. So if you take 51.9 divided by 1583, and then multiply the whole thing by 1000, you'll end up with a center of gravity of 32.78. And so 32.78 and 1583, they happen to meet kind of right in the top left corner there of your graph. Personally, I like this chart just a little bit better because it looks like an actual airplane. Let's run through one more example. Let's say our weight of the airplane is 1200 pounds and the moment is 35.5. We'll use the same fuel numbers of 147 and 6.2 and we're going to steal their numbers for pilot and passenger of 340 and 13.3 on the moment. We'll also put 100 pounds in the baggage compartment. Make sure you look at the notes. For example, here it says 120 pounds max. There's also another chart that says how much weight you could put in which baggage compartment. Make sure you look at those just to make sure you don't exceed any limitations. If you follow the long dashed line for our baggage area one, you can see that 100 pounds of baggage comes out to about 6.4 on the moment. So if we add everything up, that's 1787 and 61.4 on the moment. And if we go to our moment envelope, you can see that 1787 is not exactly in that envelope and neither is 61.4. So you're outside your weight and balance limits. We can also calculate our center of gravity. So if you take 61.4 and you divide it by 1787 and then times it by 1000, you end up with 34.36. So your CG is a little bit after 34, so you're within the CG limits, but 1787 is way out there, which means you're exceeding your weight limits. So what can you do? You probably want to take everybody with, but the baggage, let's say we leave all the baggage. And this is where knowing your limitations comes in. If we leave 100 pounds of baggage, you're going to end up with 1687 for your weight, which in this airplane happens to be 17 pounds over the max takeoff weight of 1670. So you need to leave 17 more pounds of weight before you go. What else can you do? Well, we can get rid of some fuel. Defueling the airplane is kind of difficult, but you can burn some fuel. And in this case, 17 pounds, if you take 17 divided by 6 pounds per gallon, That'll give you 2.8 gallons that you need to burn. If you haven't filled the airplane up yet, you don't have to fill it up all the way to the top to 24.5 gallons. You can just fill it up to 21 or even 20 gallons and that'll solve your problem. I want to go over a written test question with you just to make sure you understand how to do it. Upon landing, the front passenger, 180 pounds, departs the airplane. Our rear passenger, 204 pounds, moves to the front passenger position. What effect does this have on the CG if the airplane weighed 2,690 pounds and the moment, divided by 100 in this case, was 2,260 just prior to the passenger transfer? So in other words, you land, you park, the front passenger gets out, and the rear passenger moves up to the front. Even without doing a lot of math, you can tell that the weight of the airplane decreases by 180 pounds. You can also tell that the center of gravity probably moves forward because the back guy is not in the back anymore, he's in the front now. Let's run the numbers and see what actually happens. Our airplane weighed 2690, the moment was 2260, and then we have a passenger leaving and a passenger moving to the front, and the main question is what happens to the CG? So we need to find the old CG before passengers moved and left. Your moment divided by your weight equals your CG. So if we take our moment over 100 of 2260, we divide it by the weight of 2690. Now we have to multiply the whole thing by 100 since your moment is divided by 100 in this problem. And that will give you an old CG of 84.02. To deal with the passenger shift, let's split this up into a weight and a moment problem. We'll deal with the weight first. Our weight was 2690 and we subtract 180 pounds when the passenger leaves. So that gives you a new weight of 2510. And now for the moment. This airplane has a table instead of a graph. So for our 180 passenger that left from the front seat, we subtract 153 for the moment. 
We can also subtract the moment for the person who was in the back. As you can tell by the table, there is no entry for 204 pounds. Fortunately, they do tell you what the rear seat arm is, and that happens to be 121. So if you take your weight, multiply it by your arm, that gives you a moment. Our weight is 204, we multiply it by 121, and that gives you a moment of 24,684. This problem divides the moments by 100, so we will do that too, and that gives you 246.84. Since the person was leaving from the back seat, we subtracted from the total moment, and then we will add it to the front when that person goes to the front. So let's go ahead and do that now. Once again, there is no entry for 204 pounds for the front seat, but there is an arm of 85. You take your weight of 204 times the arm of 85, and that gives you a moment of 17,340 or 173.4 with the divided by 100. So we add that to our moment, and what we have as a result of this math is the new moment of 2033.56. When you're doing the multiplication manually, it's a really good idea to check your answer for reasonableness. For example, here, if you look at the chart, 180, 190, 200, each time the moment goes up by about 12. So for 204 pounds, your answer should be 245, 246, 247, somewhere in that range. If you come up with an answer of 24,000, you know something's wrong, or 2,000 for that matter. That's how you can find out really quick if you're close to the right answer. So we know our new weight, we know our new moment, and the question was asking about center of gravity. So to find center of gravity, you take your moment and you divide it by your weight. 2033.56 divided by 2510, and then remember we multiply it by 100 because everything is divided by 100. And our new center of gravity is 81.076. So back to the original question, what happens to the center of gravity? Your old center of gravity was 84, your new one is 81. It moved forward three inches. This airplane has a slightly different layout of information. So if you're looking for the empty weight or the moment on the written test, it's hidden kind of towards the bottom. Let's make sure our numbers were within limits. So we had 2510, that's pretty close to 2525, and our center of gravity was 81, and that's between 77 and 85, so we're in that range. Also, just for fun, let's look at the moment table. For a weight of 2510, we need to be between 1940 and 2150, and we were at 2033, so we're within all the limits for the moment and for the weight. So now you know the basics behind weight and balance and how to actually do one. If you have questions, don't forget to leave them. Otherwise, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.